on for many centuries, depopulating the continent, stifling it economic growth, and leading to conflicts between various groups that still exist today. Colonization and exploitation of Africa. While the abolition of slavery in the 19th century might have seemed like a step towards progress, it did not signify an end to France's exploitation of African lands and resources. Instead, it marked the beginning of a new chapter in which France sought to exert control over Africa's vast wealth for its own benefit. Following the abolition of slavery, France's thirst for Africa's resources remained unquenched. With a focus on economic domination, France turned to colonization as a means to secure its interests. The scramble for Africa in the late 19th and early 20th centuries saw European powers, including France, carve up the African continent without regard for its diverse cultures, histories, or existing borders. This led to the colonization of numerous African countries, each accompanied by a catalog of atrocities, Algeria. While visiting Algiers during his 2017 election campaign, French President Emmanuel Macron did admit that the French colonization of Algeria was a crime against humanity. The colonial period in Algeria was a time of suffering and struggle for Algerians who fought to win back their freedom and defend their values against French attempts to subjugate them. It was also a struggle to end foreign control over the country's wealth and resources. On the pretext of a slight to their consul, the French invaded Algeria in 1830. Directed by Marshal Bougaud, who became the first governor general of Algeria, the conquest was violent and marked by a scorched earth policy designed to reduce the power of the native rulers, the day, including massacres, mass defilement, and other atrocities. Between 500,000 and 1 million from approximately 3 million Algerians were killed in the first three decades of the conquest. In 1834, Algeria became a French military colony. It was declared by the Constitution of 1848 to be an integral part of France and was divided into three departments, Alger, Oran, and Constantine. Many French and other Europeans, like Spanish, Italians, Maltese, and others, later settled in Algeria. Under French rule, Algeria faced a systematic campaign of oppression and exploitation. The Algerian people were subjected to forced labor, land confiscation, and heavy taxation. The French colonial administration aimed to exploit Algeria's vast resources, particularly its fertile lands and valuable minerals, to benefit the French economy. These exploitative practices led to widespread poverty and deprivation among the Algerian population. Records suggest that French soldiers engaged in genocide through people from helicopters. The skulls of the decapitated Algerian leaders demanding freedom were exhibited at the Human Museum of Paris in 1880. To this day, Algeria is still waiting for repatriation of the skulls to return, some of whom have been identified. The socio-economic consequences of colonization were profound. Algerian farmers were pushed off their lands, as vast tracts of fertile territory were seized for European settlers, known as colons. The traditional Algerian way of life was disrupted, and the Algerian people faced discrimination and segregation in their own country. French authorities promoted cultural assimilation, suppressing Algerian language and culture in favor of French norms. French occupation of Algeria would be marked by a long list of massacres, even to unarmed civilians. This was a series of attacks by French colonial authorities and Pied Noir settler militias on Algerian civilians in 1945 around the market town of Sétif, west of Constantine, in French Algeria. In response to French police firing on demonstrators at a protest on May 8, 1945, Riots in the town were followed by attacks on French settlers in the surrounding countryside, resulting in 102 deaths. The French colonial authorities and European settlers retaliated by killing between 6,000 and 30,000 Muslims in the region. Both the outbreak and the indiscriminate nature of its retaliation marked a turning point in Franco-Algerian relations, leading to the Algerian War of 1954 to 1962. Founded in 1954, the Algerian National Liberation Front, or Front de Libération Nationale, FLN created an armed wing, the Armée de Libération Nationale, or National Liberation Army, to engage in an armed struggle against French authority. Many Algerian soldiers served for the French army in the First Indochina War, 
had strong sympathy for the Vietnamese fighting against France and took up their experience to support the ALN. The Algerian War of Independence, spanning from 1954 to 1962, stands as a testament to both the Algerian people's determination for self-determination and France's willingness to use extreme measures to maintain control. In response to the growing insurgency, France resorted to brutal tactics to suppress the FLN and maintain its grip on Algeria. The use of torture and arbitrary detention by French security forces became notorious during this period. The war brought about so much death and sorrow. It caused the deaths of between 300,000 and 1,500,000 Algerians. During the war, massacres of civilians, defilement and torture was a common tactic used by the French. The French destroyed over 8,000 villages and relocated over 2 million Algerians to concentration camps, with some being forced into labor. A notable instance of defilement was that of Jamila Bupasha, a 23 years old Algerian woman who was arrested in 1960, accused of attempting to bomb a cafe in Algiers. Her confession was obtained through torture and defilement. Her subsequent trial affected French public opinion about the French army's methods in Algeria after publicity of the case by Simone de Beauvoir and Giselle Halimi. In response to the war, French police would conduct a mass cleansing of Paris in what is known as the Paris Massacre of 1961. Under orders from the head of the Parisian police, Maurice Papon, the national police attacked a demonstration by 30,000 pro-national liberation front Algerians. After 37 years of denial and censorship of the press, in 1998, the government finally acknowledged 40 deaths, while some historians estimate that between 200 and 300 Algerians died. These deaths was due to heavy-handed beating by the police, as well as mass drowning, as police officers who threw demonstrators into the River Seine. The war's impact extended beyond the battlefield, leaving scars on both Algerian society and French public opinion. International condemnation of French actions further intensified as reports of torture and human rights abuses surfaced. The Algerian War of Independence concluded with the signing of the Evian Accords in 1962, leading to Algeria's formal independence. However, the legacy of colonization and the war's brutality continue to shape Algeria's socio-political landscape to this day.